Chapter 9 The Fir Tree Out in the woods stood a nice little fir tree. The place he had was a very good one. The sun shone on him as to fresh air. There was enough of that and round him grew many large-sized comrades, pines as well as firs. But the little fir wanted so very much to be a grown-up tree. His prayers were soon answered and he grew into a tall and magnificent tree. In autumn, the woodcutters always came and felled some of the largest trees. This happened every year and the young fir tree that had now grown trembled at the sight. The cut trees were laid in carts and the horses dragged them out of the wood. Where did they go to? What became of them? In spring, when the swallows and the stoves came, the tree asked them, Don't you know where they have been taken? Have you not met them anywhere? The stoke looked musing, nodded his head and said, Yes, I think I know. I met many ships as I was flying here from Egypt. On the ships were magnificent masks and they smelt of fur. When Christmas came, quite young trees were cut down. These young trees were laid on carts and the horses drew them out of the wood. Where are they going to? asked the fir. We know, chirped the sparrows. We have peeped in at the windows in the town below. The greatest the magnificence one can imagine awaits them. We saw them planted in the middle of the warm room and decorated with the most beautiful things, with golden apples, with gingerbread, with toys, and many hundred lights. And then? asked the fir tree. What happens then? We did not see anything more. It was beautiful. That is still better than to cross the sea, cried the tree rejoicing. When will Christmas come? I am now tall, and my branches spread like the others that were carried off last year. Rejoice in our presence, said the air and the sunlight. But the tree did not rejoice at all. He grew and grew and was green both winter and summer. Towards Christmas, he was one of the first that was cut down. He fell to the earth with a sigh. He felt a sharp pain. He could not think of happiness for he was sorrowful at being separated from his home. The tree was unloaded in a courtyard and carried into a large drawing room. The servants as well as the young ladies decorated it. On one branch, there hung little nets cut out of colored paper and each net was filled with sugar plums. Among the other bows, gilded apples and walnuts were hung. Little blue and white tapers were placed among the leaves. At the very top, a large red star was fixed. It was really splendid. Oh, thought the tree. Perhaps in the evening, the other trees from the forest will come to look at me. I wonder if I shall take root here and winter and summer stand covered with ornaments. In the evening, the candles were lighted in every bough. What brightness! The tree trembled. So one of the tapers set fire to the foliage. It started burning. Help! Help! cried the young ladies, and they quickly put out the fire. Now the tree did not even dare tremble. What a state he was in! He was so uneasy. Suddenly, both the doors opened and a troop of children rushed in, and a troop of children rushed in. They danced round the tree, and one present after the other was pulled off. What are they about? thought the tree. What is to happen now? And the lights burned down to the very branches, and as they burned down, they were put out one after the other. Children fell upon it with such violence that all its branches cracked. The children danced about with their beautiful playthings. No one looked at the tree except the old nurse who peeped between the branches. But it was only to see if there was a fig 
or an apple left that had been forgotten, cried the children, drawing a little fat man towards the tree. He seated himself under it and said, Now, we are in the shade, and the tree can listen too. But I shall tell only one story. Now which will you have? That about Levity Every or about Humpy Dumpy who tumbled downstairs and yet after all again to the throne and married the princess? Humpy Dumpy fell downstairs and yet he married the princess. Yes, yes, that's the way of the world thought the fir tree and believed it. Well, well, who knows, perhaps I may fall downstairs too and get a princess as wife. In the morning, the servant and the housemaid came in. They dragged him out of the room and up the stairs into the loft. And here, in a dark corner, where no daylight could enter, they left him. What is the meaning of this? thought the tree. What am I to do here? He leaned against the wall, lost in thought. Days and nights passed on, and nobody came up. And when at last somebody did come, it was only to put some great trunks in a corner out of the way. There stood the tree quite hidden, entirely forgotten. Squid! Squid! said a little mouse at the same moment, peeping out of his hole. And then another little one came. They smelt the fir tree and rustled among the branches. It is dreadfully cold, said the mouse. But for that, it would be delightful here. Old fair, wouldn't it? I am by no means old, said the fir tree. Where do you come from? asked the mice. Tell us about the most beautiful spot on the earth. I only know the wood, where the sun shines, and where the little birds sing. And then he told all about his youth, and the little mice had never heard the like before. And they listened and said, How much you have seen, how happy you must have been. Yes, those were happy times. And then he told about Christmas Eve when he was decked out with cakes and candles. Oh, said the little mice, how fortunate you have been, old fir tree. I am by no means old, said he. I came from the wood this winter. I am quite young. They may still come. Humpy Dumpy fell downstairs, and yet he got a princess. Who is Humpy Dumpy? asked the mice. So then, the fir tree told the whole fairy tale. Next night, two more mice came to listen to his stories, but they did not find them too interesting. Do you know only one story? asked the mice. Only that one, answered the tree. It is a very stupid story. Can't you tell any other stories? No, said the tree. Then goodbye said the rats, and they went home. The tree was lonely again. One morning, some people came and set to work in the loft. The trunks were moved, the tree was pulled out and thrown towards the stairs, where the daylight shone. Now a merry life will begin again, thought the tree. He felt the fresh air the first. Now, then, I shall really enjoy life. But alas, his leaves were all dry and yellow. In the courtyard, some of the children were playing who had danced at Christmas round the fir tree. They were glad at the sight of him. One of them ran and tore off the red star. Only look what is still on the ugly old Christmas tree, said he, trampling on the branches. The tree was sad. It's over. It's past said the poor tree. I should have rejoiced when I had reason to do so. Now it's past.